Greetings, friends, and welcome to the worship service of the United Methodist Church of Estes Park. We are so glad that you have joined us. Please know that no matter who you are or where you are on your life's journey, you are welcome here. There is a place for you in this church. In addition to this recorded service, we are also participating in live Zoom worship each Sunday morning at 9.45 a.m. Mountain Time. We'd love it if you would join us so you can email me for the link. I encourage you to check out this week's news from the pews for all of the announcements of the church. This week, we are wrapping up our current Zoom book study on Reverend Jamar Tisby's The Color of Compromise. Join us on Wednesday at 10 a.m. or 4 p.m. Links are available in News from the Pews or on the church calendar online. If you are worshiping with us and would like to be part of our congregation, please send me an email. I would love to connect you with the various ministries of our church and welcome you to our faith community. And now let us worship the Lord with joy. Please join in the call to worship. Come, Holy Spirit, ignite our hearts with joy and confidence. For God has done wondrous things for us. Come, Holy Spirit, fill us with the power of the rushing wind that we may faithfully serve you in all that we do. For Christ has called each of us and blessed us. Come, Holy Spirit, be with us today. Help us to boldly proclaim Christ risen. Amen. Please join me in the opening in the opening prayer. God appointed in fire, in boldness this day to receive your power. Help us to proclaim the wondrous things that you have done and continue to do in our lives. Give us strength and courage to share the good news of your love and your presence. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Join in the affirmation of faith. We believe in one God, Father, the Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten of not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified. 
who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in the one and only Catholic, Catholic and Apostolic Church. Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We will look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Friends, this is the point in our service where if we were meeting in person, our ushers would receive our morning offering. This church has been very generous in its giving through this time of pandemic to support the mission and ministry of this church. So I encourage you to check out the ways to give on the screen, either by sending a check by mail or through our online giving. Let us pray. Living God, you are the Lord of all. Only you can send your spirit to bring us new life. You graciously speak your word of hope in time of struggle and in times of joy and peace. We are grateful that you are continually at work in our lives in the world to fulfill your promises. May our giving today show our trust in you. We pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, let us join our hearts and minds together in an attitude of prayer. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, and fill us with your love. Open our eyes to see the presence of God all around us. May we see you, God, in the stillness of this sacred space, in the busyness and noise of our world in the joys and celebrations of our lives, in the tragedies and struggles that break our hearts. Come, Holy Spirit, and comfort those who grieve. We pray that you would grant them the peace that only you can bring. Stir within all of us a trust in life beyond death, as we ponder the mysteries of Christ's resurrection and the hope we have in new and everlasting life. Come, Holy Spirit, and bring wholeness to the sick. Strengthen those who are weak, heal the wounded and broken, give rest to the weary. Come, Holy Spirit, and inspire our warring world to seek peace, to love our enemies, to put away our weapons, to remember the price paid for our freedom, to care for those who have served. Come, Holy Spirit, and ignite a fire in our bones, a passion for justice that cannot be quenched until all your children are loved until no one is marginalized or oppressed, until everyone has the opportunity to thrive, until the world is transformed and renewed. Come, Holy Spirit, and revive your church. Liberate us from complacency, apathy, and pettiness. Inspire us with Christ's vision for a world reborn Transform our hearts and our minds. Fill us with love that overflows. Remind us, God, that there is no greater calling than to love you with all that we are and to love our neighbors as ourselves. It is for your kingdom that we now pray, filled with your spirit, using the words Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Today's scripture is from Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 21. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. 
and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Όλοι του ήταν γεμάτοι με το Αγίο Πνεύμα και άρχισαν να μιλούν σε άλλε γλώσσε, καθώ το πνεύμα του έδωσε την ικανότητα. Όλοι οι άνθρωποι in anderen Sprachen zu sprechen, Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all of these who are speaking Galileans? And how is that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, and Pamphylia, Egypt, and parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes. Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. God, as we have heard your word read and now we'll hear it proclaimed, help each of us to hear the message you intend for us this day. So last week, we celebrated Ascension Sunday, where we read about the risen Christ blessing the disciples as he ascended into heaven. That was the end of the Gospel of Luke. The book of Acts, also written by Luke, picks up at the ascension, and in the first chapter of Acts, we have read how the 11 disciples selected the 12th disciple to take the place of Judas. Where our text picks up for today is where the disciples have gathered in Jerusalem with Jews from all over the world to celebrate the Jewish festival of Shavuot, which was 50 days after the first day of Passover. Shavuot marked the wheat harvest in Israel. You can read more about that in Exodus 34 if you're interested. It also commemorates the anniversary of the giving of the Torah by God to the children of Israel on Mount Sinai. So this was a big pilgrimage festival. There were three pilgrimage festivals each year. <clears throat> and any Jew was, every Jew was required to come to Jerusalem for those three pilgrimage festivals. So this was a big one, this festival of Shavuot. They, um, this explains why the disciples 
And people from all over the world were in Jerusalem at this time. And while they were gathered, the spirit that Jesus promised arrives from heaven with some pretty spectacular special effects. The spirit sounded like a violent wind and appeared like tongues of fire. Notice here that the text does not say that the spirit was wind or fire, but is compared with the sound that a mighty wind would make and that flames in the flames that fire produces. Luke's intent here, I believe, is to create a very vivid impression or a very vivid image of the Spirit's powerful presence among the people gathered with the disciples. So there was, a, there was great mystery on the day of Pentecost. As we read, all of a sudden the wind was blowing, there were flames and people were hearing each other speak in the native language of each person. Yeah, I think that's a pretty vivid impression that the Spirit made. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, the church receives the authority to proclaim the gospel of the risen Lord. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, even Peter, who had publicly denied Christ, Peter becomes a bold preacher. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, we know that the gospel is intended for everyone. That repentance and forgiveness are offered to all who call upon the name of the Lord. The Holy Spirit gives the church the authority to proclaim the good news to all the world as represented in the people gathered in Jerusalem. A new day has dawned for those who follow the resurrected Christ. God has bestowed upon them a bold and prophetic Holy Spirit to spread the good news. I've spent quite a bit of time this week praying and wondering and pondering how we as individuals, how we as a church, how we as a denomination claim the power of the Holy Spirit anew. How do we fuel ourselves with the amazing power experienced by the early church? Today, in addition to being Pentecost Sunday, this is also known as Heritage Sunday or Aldersgate Sunday in the United Methodist Church. This day we honor our heritage by committing ourselves to the continuing call of God as known and spread by Charles and John Wesley. You see, Aldersgate Day is celebrated on May 24th, or the Sunday closest, to commemorate the day in 1738 when John Wesley experienced assurance of his salvation. Wesley reluctantly attended a group meeting that evening on Aldersgate Street in London. As he heard a reading from Luther's preface to the Epistle to the Romans, he felt his heart strangely warmed. Wesley wrote the following in his journal, that at about 8.45 p.m., while he was describing the change which God works in the heart through faith in Christ, I felt my heart strangely warmed. He continues, I felt I did trust in Christ, Christ alone for my salvation. An assurance was given to me that he had taken away my sins, even mine, and saved me from the law of sin and death. Charles Wesley, John Wesley's brother, just a few days before, had also experienced a conversion experience in this same place. The Holy Spirit was made manifest in each of their lives in that time and space. I personally have my own Aldersgate experience I don't think I've ever talked about this publicly as it's a very personal experience to me, but I have felt led to share it with you. 
I was in my second year of serving my first church out of seminary. I was tired and I was lonely. I felt like I really wasn't making a difference at that church and in that community. I was just downright discouraged. It was in August and I was attending a continuing education event hosted by the Indiana Conference of the United Methodist Church. I had had a great week with my colleagues from the Indiana Conference and had really enjoyed getting to know this local pastor named Agnes Griffey. At the closing worship service of the event, the final hymn was, It Is Well With My Soul. Now, if you have never heard an entire church full of United Methodist pastors sing, you have really missed it. As a group, we can sing. When it got to the third verse, something happened in my soul. Hear those words. My sin, oh the bliss of this glorious thought. My sin, not in part, but in whole, is nailed to the cross and I bear it no more. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, oh my soul. Putting into words what I experienced is nearly impossible. I felt a jolt like lightning rush through my body. And like John Wesley, I felt that I did trust in Christ, Christ alone for my salvation. And an assurance was given to me that God through Christ and the Holy Spirit had taken away my sins, even mine, and saved me from the law of sin and death. That day, the Holy Spirit was made manifest in my life. You see, Pentecost is about the moment the church was born. It's about what the church of Jesus Christ is called to be. It's about the Holy Spirit touching our lives. It's about the Holy Spirit bringing people together as one despite their differences. Bringing them together as one despite their different cultures, their different languages, their different traditions, their different beliefs, their different interpretations, their different theologies, their different opinions. Pentecost is about lighting a fire under us as individuals and lighting a fire under our church. Pentecost is about being unified being unified in words and in a salvation that is for all people. Pentecost is about the power of the Holy Spirit that can transform people like John Wesley and me and can transform your life as well. How is the Holy Spirit working in your life? How is the Holy Spirit working in the life of this church? Please join me as we continue to pray, come, Holy Spirit, come. Amen. Now let us go forth from this place as a people of God who are empowered by the Holy Spirit, through which there, it means that there is nothing that we cannot accomplish for the cause of Christ. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. <laughs>